Hi, I'm George Cow, and in this video, I get to interview one of my clients and members of the Master Art Coaching Program, Fiona Moore. Uh, she's a fantastic spiritual mentor and healer. And before I go on to her bio, I just want to say hello. Hi, Fiona. Hey, George. Great to be here. Thanks for doing this. So allow me to read uh, your bio so that the audience can get a sense of what you do, and then we'll go into first talking about most of the folks watching this um, are learning business, building business of some sort. So we'll first talk about some of the lessons you've learned in growing your business, and then we'll go into more discussion about transformation, spiritual um, healing transformation. So Fiona Moore is a health and well-being coach, consult, consultant, healer, and mentor. She helps people awaken their true self to heal their mind and body and connect them to their highest potential. Her specialties include the transformation and healing of anxiety, depression, cancer, and chronic illness. She mentors coaches, counselors, healers, and practitioners to be more impactful in their work. Wonderful. So Fiona, you've been doing this mentoring work, this healing work for how many, how long have you been doing this now? I guess almost 30 decades. Yeah, 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 30 years, my gosh. And you've, of course, gone through the ups and downs of business like all of us have. And, um, and you kind of, in, in the preparation to this um, conversation, you kind of was, were thinking about three particular business lessons you've learned. And I'll let you kind of start anywhere, anywhere you'd like. Mm. Well, just as you uh, make an introduction, uh, I was reflecting on the fact that when I um, decided that, that I wanted to share my gift, my understanding of healing, I didn't, my intention was not to have a business. It was to share my understanding. And, you know, I started small with one client and then two clients and then three. And then all of a sudden, you know, you've got to start keeping, you know, records of accounting records and this and that. And before long, I realized, oh, um, I, I'm running a business. But it wasn't my first intent. And, you know, that's really the first thing that springs to mind as the first um, insight I had about having a profitable, sustainable business, which is to keep serving your people as your priority. Never let that slip. Yeah. Because when we stay clear that that's our, that's our, that's our purpose, you know, we, we, we feel that inside and we, we, we live from that understanding that we're here to serve, that relationship with ourself keeps us plugged into our inspiration, yeah. keeps us kind of plugged into our power source that, that flows as fresh ideas and can pick us up you know, when we feel that, you know, running the business or how are we going to move this forward, we have self-doubt, that, that connection to our inspiration will pick us up and keep showing the way forward. And um, that, that way of being in, in business, as well as being in life, of course, um, is nothing about a system. It's not about how to create a business using a system. It's allowing inspiration to guide you every step of the way. And, you know, I have a, I've had a few detours, you know, with myself into business systems. So I have learned about that side of business. And so my second um, insight around business is that there are hundreds and hundreds of, of systems for creating a business and for rolling a, what might start out as a person to person business online to reach more people. And unfortunately, uh, we live in a world, particularly, you know, I think it's pretty much globally now in the business world, where um, I regard it as mostly toxic, the, the business practices, the ways of, you know, um, generating clients through systems and processes. It's where profit is the primary motivator and, and goal, if you like. And customers and clients come second or even further back than that in the line. And whilst it's true that systems to, to uh, maximize technology, to draw clients in to, to uh, a business system like that can work, 
I found, and I think this is true for any heart-centered business practitioner, business owner, who is essentially um, intuitively in an understanding that they're here to serve, is that those systems um, just didn't feel right to me. Kind of like I started to feel kind of sick, you know, getting involved in programs that taught like that. And it was instructive to get involved in programs that had profit, profit, even though they might have said, we have your clients, you know, primary behind the scenes, it was about profit. It was instructive to kind of go, if you like, into the dark side a little bit of business practices to get a bit streetwise about the um, unhealthy business practices there are. And so the, the remedy to that um, is to stay true to your heart, to follow that guidance, even if it means, like it did in my case, pulling out of a program I had paid for and committed to ahead of its finish, because I knew it was not aligned with what I was really about. And our heart won't let us down because that's a compass and that will keep us in our integrity and help us to create a business using some of the very same tools and technologies that the profit-making businesses are using. But the use of those tools will be um, all about serving more and serving more effectively. So then, then our business becomes sustainable because we're not being worn out and uh, you know, in some cases feeling um, overwhelmed and sick by the tools and technologies we're using because the use of them is in alignment with the, with the objective and the primary um, interest which is to serve beautifully said beautifully said i hope those of you watching this will uh rewind this in and listen to that watch that again to get back into the heart of why we're doing this uh, and how we can do it so the question for you here regarding this is how would you encourage or advise the business owner who wants to serve as the primary intention, wants to give and, and heal, and yet they are worried about the material, you know, and you and I, I'm sure we've experienced that uh, in some time in our business journey. Um, and some people might be there right now. So how would, what, what, I, and yes, we can talk about all the pragmatics of what do you do financially to make, you know, to make that work. But let's talk about the, the emotions. How do we continue to keep returning, I guess, to the heart um, when, and this is not just true in business, but just in any relationships, right? When the material uh, is calling out for, for attention. The material, George, meaning the, the, the material that we're here to share? Or no, no, I'm just talking about the, the financial needs, let's say. You know, it's like, oh, I got to make money. I can't be thinking. Oh, material. Okay. Got I can't it. Be got it. about the, the service right now. I just have to, ah. to, to get people to buy. I have to do whatever is necessary yeah. to persuade them, to manipulate them, uh, mm. which is the system you're talking about the, right right so how do we how do we yeah how do we shut those that it's a temptation it's, it's just you could say spiritual temptation to say well this is the easy path is that we can get people to to give things to us in ways that we maybe we wish we wouldn't we wouldn't have to but it works hmm. in the short term yeah well i think the uh first thing that springs to mind is 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 perhaps it's a bit easier uh, for someone just starting out in, in, in their business. Because I would say, to, I say to people who are just starting out, you know, keep your day job. Mm. You know, keep your day job. You know, start saving to create a cushion. And then, and then drop your day, day job to part time when, when you know it's ready, when you're ready to start to straddle that, that transition between employment to self employment. Because then it sort of staves off that, that the insecurity thoughts about paying the mortgage and the bills because there's a steady income coming in, okay? And you start to learn the systems in your business. And often for me, I mean, literally it was, it was, it was um, learning some financial um, 
knowledge. I just didn't know how money really worked, you know, ta taxes and calculating percentages for this and that. Uh, financial literacy is, is part of owning a business. It doesn't need to be elaborate. And you can have someone else do it for you. But so that, that's one thing when you're starting out, which is, you know, keep your day job for a while. Once you go, um, you know, you jump in with two feet and, and you let the, the day job go. That, that's where, I mean, I, I certainly felt a, a very uh, a unexpected transition. That was a shock, a bit like jumping in a cold pool of water. <laughs> my fear really increased, you know. I mean, I'd already been, been part-time in my business, had clients coming, saw how money came as part of serving, yeah. But suddenly it was all on the business, yeah. It all seemed up to me, yeah. And that is a, that's when your insecurity thoughts are starting to get hold. It's all on me. I've got to make this happen. Yeah. I've got to do the right thing. I've got to get the next client. I've got to keep them engaged because only then will the money come in. Now that's a slippery slope because we start losing our connection with the inspiration that is behind our business yeah. that gave us the inspiration to move into this field of work in the first place. Most uh, practitioners can, can find that connection in their client work time. It's when they can, their thoughts about the mortgage go us, us to the side because they remember. The practitioner remembers what they're really here for and they enjoy that time. Um, but let's see, let's understand what's happening there. It's not that, oh, I'm good in my client sessions, but not good keeping my business structures going. It's not that at all. We feel that well-being, we feel that alignment in us when we're connected to our inspiration. So if we can, um, so when I felt that fear ratcheted up in me when I went full time in my business, what came to me was, it was an intuition that I really did need to learn some nuts and bolts around business structures, around how to keep um, an, an account of money coming in and money going out. It was as basic as that, that, that just happened to be me. And so I, and, and, and as often happens, when, when we tune in to what our inspiration is telling us, our guidance, then within a few days or weeks or months, the perfect kind of teacher comes along. And lo and behold, this weekend course presented itself that I could get to. And it was all about the nuts and bolts and having an understanding of, of money. And also doing some inner, inner work to kind of release the, the fear thoughts about money. And so I, I jumped, jumped on that because I knew I needed it. So I suppose I'd say, be prepared to grow. Um, a growth that is not only learning the tools and technologies for your business, but a, a level of understanding about the fact that our business success is not all on us. Our business success comes by staying connected to our inspiration. And, you know, we, we're different people. We might have different ways of um, cultivating that connection. Perhaps it's meditation, you know. Um, but whatever it is, is to get interested in that direction. So even if it's just in remembering the first instance where you knew that you had something valuable to offer and share and it was helpful to people. Just connecting with that original time of insight can be enough. And that steadies the system. It calms the nervous system down, starts to take care of the emotional life that has been stirred up because it's an alignment that is, is consistent and steady and it feels secure when we're in that alignment. So even if we're not making enough money in that moment, if we're in a feeling of security, then we stay connected to inspiration that will deliver the next idea and the next client. Yeah, beautifully said, beautifully said. I've seen that to be true uh, in my own business as well. It, when there are problems, they are problems because it's not obvious to us <laughs> what the solution is in the moment. That's why we call them a problem. But it always surprises us when a solution presents itself. Oftentimes it's like, well, why didn't I think of this before? Like, because, well, we weren't in the moment of inspiration and sometimes it just takes some time you know for the for the problem to or the solution to to become ripe enough to present itself um so i'd love to spend a few minutes um uh, just having you share more about the kind of healing 
and transformation side of things. And mm. you, can, you can take it however, in whatever direction you want, but I just wanted to give the audience a taste of some of the, some of the, uh, the message that you share. Um, you, there's, there's way more than we can delve into in, in a few minutes because of all of the experience you've had. But what, what, what's something that you find yourself sharing with your audience or your clients sometimes? What's just one, one tidbit you can, mm. you can yeah. Sure, about. yeah. Um, well, really, so I'm offering a reflection um, right now, which is that um, you've probably noticed that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of self-help tools, techniques, and processes. Hundreds, if not thousands, of medications and supplements and uh, you know, tr uh, treatment approaches to, to disease. And many of them claim to be the one that is going to work, going to you know, help it heal your body, cure it, and shift your depression or anxiety. Well, if that was the case, if, if the ones that claimed and, and all the others really were the one, then why are there so many other new tools and techniques and processes? You see? So just the reflection that no, there's been no invention yet of the tool or technique or medication that works for everybody. And you'd think that that, that, that would have been created by now, since we're so smart. So, if, so that what that tells me is that it's not the tool, technique, exercise, medication, or, or supplement that, that generates healing and transformation. There must be something else more fundamental going on. We do know that healing happens and transformation happens. Yes, we know that's a fact. But if it was a tool and technique, then that tool and technique would work for everyone. Because we're all human beings, we're all constituted you know, in the same way. We all have blood, we all have you know, nervous system, this and that. So there's something else going on that is more and comes before the tool, technique, and process that is actually the, the source of the transformation. Yeah, and, and if yeah. I can jump in, real, some people say, well, the tool and technique works for certain types of people, right, who may have certain, a certain birth chart or a certain you know, age range or a certain problem. But yet, that same tool and technique that's supposed to work for everybody in that category doesn't work for everybody in that category also. Yeah, exactly. And so it's that, it's that how whatever level you want to go to, yeah. it doesn't work for everybody that it's supposed to work for. No. So that, that leaves us, you know, in a space of, and in, rather than in a space of despair, where that leaves us in a place that is, is to get curious. So, because we do know tra cha uh, change, transformation, and healing happens. What's really, so what's going on there? Yeah? Get interested there, you see. What's the secret here? And for me, all healing, all transformation comes about as a shift in consciousness. A shift in consciousness. As you said earlier, George, when a shift in consciousness comes, then the solution comes to us yeah? and that we couldn't see before. So that's, and that's the same for everybody who experiences a shift in their emotional mental state, their, a shift in their physical well-being. It, it, it's, a, it's a shift in consciousness first and foremost. So that's the understanding I bring in for people. So perhaps differently, even to how I worked, um, well, certainly um, 15 years ago, I think really my work has been refining. In, in the past five or six years, it's really become very, very, very clear about it's a shift in consciousness that heals and transforms. So whereas I used to selectively teach um, a, a process that I had found very helpful, I've even dropped teaching that particular process. So now I don't offer any tools, techniques, or exercises for changing a person's mental state, emotional state, or physical state even. What I offer is an understanding that healing and transformation comes from a shift in consciousness and how to connect with that shift in consciousness through having a personal insight about the fact of consciousness being a healing intelligence. That, that shift in that insight about the, the, the intelligence that we are, that is called consciousness, is a healing agent. begins to open up an understanding about 
how our mind and body really work and how life really works. So, because the energy we are, the consciousness we are, another word I use for consciousness is energy, the, the life energy that we are. That energy never gets sick. That energy never gets bent out of shape by this or that. It's, the expression is it's perfectly whole and complete. Perfectly whole and complete. So the energy we are can reveal itself as spontaneous healing. I've seen it happen with cancer tumors. Spontaneous healing that the medical profession are not interested in because they can't explain it under their paradigm. As um, a spontaneous or very rapid disappearance of someone's 16-year depression. Yeah? Consciousness jumps the parameters of time and space. And there can be spontaneous, rapid healing by a shift in consciousness. Because the energy of that that is, that gets connected with, is perfectly whole and complete. Mm. And that perfection of wholeness expresses itself as increased well-being and sometimes spontaneous miracles in healing the body. It's brilliant. And I'll just say also, sometimes it could be spontaneous um, benefits in other areas of life too. Whether it's in one's business, I've heard about, oh, why did suddenly these clients all show up? <laughs> you know, new clients all show up. Uh, it is, uh, the shift of consciousness is, is foundational. Like you said, it's powerful. We have a, just a few minutes left, and I want to make sure you're, uh, those of you who are watching this, get more. How, do we, how do we engage more with you, Fiona? Um, you have various offerings. Maybe you can share, share some of those with us here. Well, the shortcut is to go to my website, fionamore.com, and you'll see uh, various um, offerings, groups, and uh, to sign up for my newsletter. Um, to get a quick kind of sample of my work, if you've got a pressing problem, such as a decision to make or a, a treatment choice to make, um, then I have a, I think it's a four-hour package over the course of about six weeks, and you can use the time up as you like. It's called Breakthrough That. Um, for more profound um, transformation where you really want to track the entire journey of how your emotional or physical problem is actually an invitation and a catalyst to shift your whole, not just your mind, your body into a new level of well-being, but your entire life, as you say, George. It's not exclusive to body and mind. It, it, this shift in consciousness um, reveals a whole new level of life. Then I have a um, three or six month one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, an intensive, which is a personal retreat with me here in Oregon, um, gives that six month experience, condenses it into three days. And that is a profound um, moment where you walk in as one person and leave as another, <laughs> kind of literally, because your consciousness shifts. Um, and later this year, I'm excited uh, to be working on now a, a program I've long been wanting to offer out and now feel ready to offer because of what I've seen with individual clients, which is um, Beyond Broken, an online program to heal cancer from the inside out from a shift in consciousness. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, fantastic. I'm excited about that too. So wonderful, wonderful. Um, I will be sure to put the information in the notes of this video, link to Fiona's website as well as her Facebook business page. And thank you, Fiona, for, for doing this. It was wonderful. And I hope uh, folks will really reflect on what's been shared here and reach out, comment below if you thought this was helpful, if you have any questions for Fiona, I'll make sure she sees it. So thank you, Fiona. No, thank you, George.